Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 144 of the IROC Knits podcast. I am here with my friend Tiffany today, and so we are doing Chatting with Tiffany. I am so thankful that I have so many friends who are willing to go through all of their knits and pick their favorites and then drive out to my house because I live way out, really close to cow cows. Like, it took you longer to get here than you thought, probably, right? It was a little bit, yeah, but it's so nice out right now. So oh, right, yeah, it's we're beautiful. super thankful. So it the sun was shining earlier today, and when I came home, I took my sweater off because I was too warm, and then I put it back on, and I was like, oh, this is really bright. Like, this is my neon sweater. But I went to Joanne Fabrics, and two women stopped me in the, in the yarn store and said, I love your sweater. And I said, I do like to wear it in the spring when it's been so gray <laughs> and mucky and, like, there's no color anywhere yet and then they both said and I bet you made that and I was like I did make that so that's the place to go to get a compliment <laughs> right like feeling, yep. when you go in to somewhere like Joann's and people know that the people that are in there are craftsy mm -hmm. you know they're crafty people that are gonna say something I'm like okay then I am wearing this is my hero my neon hero using um uh, fat squirrel fibers from back in the day when Amy Beth used to dye yarn, which was a long time ago. I don't know that Amy Beth watches these, but she would be like, wow, that yarn is old because I bought her. This is the color of the bead that her daughter got stuck in her ear oh, no. and told her mom, mom, I can't hear you. Mom, I can't hear you for like two weeks. And then, um, her mom was like, what is going on? And she's like, I've been telling you, I put that bead in my ear. Took her to the doctor. Sure enough, orange bead came out of the ear of the child. It was a great story. And so then she dyed yarn, this orange yarn color, and called it, yeah, that bead in her ear. Because she said, I felt like the worst mother ever. She had said to me over and over again, I can't hear you. And I, you know, I was playing with those beads. And she's like, but I just was like, what is she talking about? I, I just wasn't paying close enough attention. So anyway, let's talk about how we met. First. Sure. Yeah. So um, I believe the first time we've met, or at least had a conversation, was at the Darn It Anyways Sweater Camp 2022. Yep. It was in the hotel that was closer to the lift bridge. Yep. Um, or former lift bridge. Um, yeah. And I had gotten there and sat down with Sam from Lavender yep. Loon, um, who we graduated uh, from high school together. I don't think it's embarrassing to say how old you are. So we graduated in 2000. <laughs> so woo, class of 2000. Um, and we happen to reconnect and it's so funny how fibers bring people together. Absolutely. And Absolutely. It was just like talking to someone you see all the time. So it was really wonderful. It was high speed catch up. And then, um, Sam already knew you and yep. then Sam had to leave early cause she lives not close to the cities, let alone Stillwater. So she took off early, but you adopted me at your table yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to hang out with Corey and friends and. Um, there are people who will have known me from other events, and I am a gatherer of people. Like, I do like to say to people, are you sitting alone? Come over here and join us. So it doesn't surprise me that we would have said, you can sit at our table. How did you and Sam reconnect? Like, um, what was, like, the impetus for, like, after not being connected? Was it yarn? It was yarn, because I think it was something like, we were Facebook or Instagram friends. And then I think she said what her yarn was. And I found actually this uh, variegated yarn at Stephen B. And I was like, I have Sam's yarn. I have to let her know. Okay. Um, and so it, it was through fibers and her creative side. We were in band together. Yeah. Like, I know she's creative. So it was really neat. Um, yeah, that's was, cool. Because she did cool. sit, we did sit at that table. And that was really the first year kind of after, but during the pandemic where yep. people were unsure about going to sweater camp and there were tables that were masked and tables yep. that were not masked. And it was, everything was just a little iffy, like that whole getting Very back cautious, together. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, are we going to be in a big room of people and are people vaccinated? And, you know, it, things were just like, that was very, uh, it was a weird I don't think that we have that as much anymore, although there were people this year that wore masks during mm -hmm. camp and, you know, def definitely compromised people or people who were just being more cautious. But, um, and then we, we've run into each other a, a couple of times. So I've yeah. reached out and said, hey, let's stay in touch. 
and and she doesn't live near me really like it how long took like, um, it was about 40 minutes but it was i live in golden valley so i just say minneapolis it's yeah. a suburb of minneapolis yeah um, but it's on the west side so yeah you have to cross through yeah the middle of the city but it's you know, like it's a trek to get out here so it's not like we get together all the time but you just did the sample knit for Sam of my shawl yeah, design, my shawl. new May shawl. And, um, and it had a hot mess edge situation during She's that challenging. process. <laughs> it was very challenging during that process. Um, and partly because about halfway through, I decided we should use more yarn. And um, I, I was frustrated with the fact that I wanted to not have as much yarn left over, which means that the shawl needed to get bigger and getting the shawl bigger needed to happen at the halfway point. So both of the sample knitters, um, Annette, who did um, one of the samples for me and Tiffany had to rip. And it was like uh, in that moment where you've asked a friend to do you a favor and do a test knit for you. And then she's really good with numbers and really good with like tech editing. And she would be like a day ahead of me. Like she was like, hey, this is what we need to do to fix this. And I was like, she was so patient with me. I was like, no, we got to have this pearl right next to the center stitch for right. something goofy. No, like, we do. Right. Yes. Like Let she was, <laughs> and I said, this is a gift. You have a gift to do this. And not everyone likes test knitting. They don't like not having all the numbers set up ahead of time and not, they don't like changes. And one of the ladies dropped out of the test knit. She's like, this is too much. Like I can't, I don't know what email I'm supposed to be reading. And I was like, and she said, I, you know, let me know if you ever have another test knit, but this was too hard for me. I can't keep up. And Tiffany was just like, here's a spreadsheet <laughs> of the numbers. And this is, and so we really went back and forth a lot during yep. that time. And then that's when I said, hey, would you be willing to come on the podcast? I would love to see you. It was so interesting because these were my first two test knits. This is, I'm so goofy that I fill my time up to the brim. I have a husband and two kiddos. They're getting older, so they need me less, which feels weird, but also liberating. Um, and like multiple jobs, like you do like, <laughs> she does more than I cram into a day. And, and people will say to me, you cram so many things into one day. And cause I'm kind of scattered that way. But when I follow you on Instagram, <laughs> like in other States, yeah, I know. Like, I'm like, where is she? She's at another music event. Like, yeah. So you do a lot of stuff with music. Yeah. With so. and working at like concerts and yeah. So um, I have a day job. I work at a financial institution in compliance and I look at procedures and it's very technical. So when I send editing notes, which apparently was very second nature for me, it was super helpful for Corey. So that super helpful because like <laughs> I'll get paragraphs from people right in an email and they'll be explaining and I won't like I can't even write and she would send something and I'd be like. Oh, hallelujah. This is awesome. <laughs> and I was also working on two other test knits at the same time, which mm -hmm. I should never do, but sometimes they, <laughs> companies bump up against stuff. So, yeah. so you, and so the, go back to the your, music thing. Yeah. Well, and I'll say, so I signed up for these two test knits. I was in a dry spot. So, you know, sometimes you just feel like I finished the sweater. So I made a sweater for my friend, Lindsay, who has just had a birthday yesterday. So it's kind of kismet, but, um, I finished her cardigan and it was just a lot of like TV knitting. So a lot of just garter or um, knits, yep. pearls, boring. Um, it turned out beautiful, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't very technical. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't have anything. It's like, I don't know what I want to knit next. And sure enough, at like 9 p.m., Corey posted, <laughs> I need a test knitter for a hat. I was like, oh, I'm available. And then the next story was, I need a test knitter for a shawl. I was like, I could also do You're that. Like, if you need both things. And I'm <laughs> so, like, are you serious? And so, because the deadlines were coming up for both things. And I was just feeling stressed about getting enough test knitters. And yeah, you jumped on board. And then because I knew Sam, I reached out to Sam just to see. Because she, she had a sale in her store. And it was hard because she didn't have quite two of something. And I was like, hey, Sam, what do you got? I love your yarn. Like, you won't leave me astray. Even if it wasn't dyed yet. And she... um we connected and it ended up being, this is great timing if you want to knit the, the sample, the sample that I'll bring around to shows and things. And then she sent me a beautiful purple yarn. I think it was called Namesake, which she knows I am like a magnet 
Like, Corey, you have orange. Yep. I have purple. <laughs> <laughs> so she sent me this beautiful color um, to knit with. So it was just this beautiful way that I can help you as a yeah. friend and help Sam as a friend. Get to experiment with some beautiful DK weight yarn with some yak in it. And now I'm in love with that, and I have another sweater in my yes, shoe, so. I know. And you got to experiment with test knitting. <laughs> yes. So I got to learn that I have this other skill that I can maybe help other people Oh, for with. sure. For um, sure. So that's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That was... And I will put a picture in here of the um, May shawl that she did, because it's kind of this lavender purpley but it has a gray undertone yeah. definitely for the light different lights and so I put it in the mail to Sam and um and she I had some pictures taken of it because I thought well Sam doesn't need to take time to have pictures taken so I took had just a few extra pictures taken at the photo shoot and um and it was so cold and so oh. windy and we were standing out in this park and I had to do the socks and the hat too. So I had to take my <laughs> shoes and socks off. And, and I'm just like this on the bench. I'm just shivering and I didn't have a coat and we're trying to wrap the shawls around me and the wind is blowing the shawls. And so we're just lucky we got any Anything good, where they're any, kind of flat. <laughs> any good, yeah, shots. And even my tech editor, he's, she's like, these aren't the best pictures you've ever taken. Did, and I was like, I know it was so cold and windy. We should have gone indoors. But it's hard with it's the hard light. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. then, I mean, we could have easily had a blizzard because it's still, it's still March here. So. Yes. Yeah. I know. Like it wasn't oh, it, yeah. snowing. It wasn't snowing. Yeah. But we, we were just standing in a park and it was so windy. And now we've had be three beautiful days in a row since I took 60s. that. 60s. <laughs> like the next day is just not windy at all. I know. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Um, okay. So we go, let's go back to your music thing. You, oh, sure. You do the music. Um, Stuff. So, um, I will sell merch. So you go in and you want to buy a t-shirt, you want to buy a CD, vinyl. Um, sometimes I will be there and the artist will just say, Hey, we're looking for someone to do this. I show up with my bag of stuff, sell their merch, pack it up, settle with the venue and the artists and then head home. So I do that as well as VIP programs. Um, I was trained by some of the best, best Mike Savis. Hi. I don't know that y'all ever see this, <laughs> yeah. but, um, uh -huh. With that group and I started with Bon Jovi so my friend Takumi who lives somewhere near here in Victoria oh, okay. he was like I think you'd be great at this meet my friend Mike and I mean recently I worked for Madonna's VIP which was a blast I got to work a candy bar I got paid to hand candy to adults who were ecstatic and it was all Madonna's favorites um, and then one other one that was like a bucket list was I worked for Sting out at Red Rocks I yeah. didn't get to meet him, yeah. let me be clear. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a beautiful venue. Yeah. I helped people seeing like one of their bucket list events as well. So it was so like heartwarming to be with my people, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> In the music part. Yeah. Which is like I can be with my So did you grow up with music? Like are you just a huge band geek? Uh like um rock and roll bands or like that? Um just loved following music or did you do you have a skill set in music? I played trombone. <laughs> okay. So I played trombone in middle school um, up through high school, but I think there's something for me that I love seeing music live. Um, we listened to the radio as we traversed across southern Minnesota to visit family. Okay. Um, and then growing, or going to shows that my friends would put on in BFW basements. <laughs> um, I grew up in Mankato. My friend Steve would put on these shows and You'd have five bucks and you'd go see some bands that were coming across the country. I didn't see them, but Green Day used to come through all the time. Yeah, yeah. And um, coming to the cities, um, I eventually would meet my husband uh, who played in a band. Yeah, I thought that was, uh, there was a connection there. So um, they're very, uh, thankfully, he, they're very good and I really enjoy them or that might have been kind of awkward to be like, oh, you're yeah. really cute. You're a band. So I, I really lucked out there, um, but that keeps me near a big metro area. Um, I know we've looked at moving away to other places, and I'm like, no one goes through that city. Like, I would never see my live bands anymore, so maybe maybe not that one. So that's intermittent, but you do it a lot. Like, as much as I can squeeze in there, um, but there's still family. So on top of all of that, so full-time job, these yep. other side things, I also do fabrication for Can Can Wonderland. So if you've ever seen this giant mastodon 
Um, I've helped the artist put the fabric on a almost, I think it's 35 feet tall. Um, that was like 90% hand sewn on there. So if you check that out, I helped with that. But it was Dusty Thune. I came up with that and built it with some friends. So um, along with that, I also volunteer a lot. So um, somehow, even with all that stuff, I volunteered over 100 hours so far this year. Which is like, like test knitting. That's that was volunteer. Work. Well, I didn't include that, but I could. <laughs> but you should, uh, <laughs> because I was just like, you are so busy, right? You do a ton with the Boy Scouts. Yep, exactly. So lots with the Boy Scouts. I have a Cub Scout and a Boy Scout, so a nine and twelve year old, and then they have different camping events and things. So I slept outside the first week in February. I first know. weekend, um, I slept under a parachute. We made food outside, like. Uh, we didn't make lunch that was a little easier but we made dinner and we had breakfast in the morning and packed it up and it was pretty cool god <laughs> yeah like every time I look at your Instagram I'm like Where, what is she doing okay she's <laughs> camping oh she's in Colorado wait a second wasn't she just home yesterday like yep. there's just yeah there's a lot go I said you just must have endless energy and you said no not you don't feel like you just you don't sleep it. a lot but <laughs> there's a trade-off and I work out and just want to stay healthy and sometimes I have to say like oh thanks there's enough someone else who will grab it I don't have to have to do everything yes um but yeah don't ask me to volunteer for anything I'll probably say yes in the silence of everyone yeah. waiting yes so no my, for sure that's my Achilles heel yeah <laughs> that's that's yeah I, I it's just like amazing to me how busy she is plus she gets knitting done which you have to have time I mean, you can squeeze it in in little places, mm -hmm. but you do have to have time Scheduling to do. Scheduling for it, at least for the test knitting, it was, I need to do all these things in the morning because I want to do like three hours of sitting, which is kind of abnormal for an evening for me, but I also fit it in because I knew January was pretty quiet Yeah. for like all the music things because yep. people coming in off the holidays, then they have to start a tour, which often is on the coast. Yeah. They don't come to Minneapolis first, so... Yeah, especially not in the winter if they can help it. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, all of that to say how she got all these things knit, I'm not really <laughs> sure. But she brought, um, what did you bring, 7, 10, something like that? I lost items? track. It's a really hard challenge to go pick your favorite things because then you're remembering all these things that connect with the people. I mean, granted, these are the things that I ended up keeping, but then you're remembering, Wait. I gifted this. Yes. I made seven and of I these. And I love this. Yes, exactly. That, And that's what people have said when they come out to the house. They're like, I had the worst time just like figuring out what I wanted to bring, right? Yeah. And what, what it might, might be of interest to people. But all of you have just loved having other people show off their stuff. So let's start with your first uh, octopus. Sure. So um, I took, um, where I started with knitting, I was a little kid. I would go to a craft store or an antique store and just see like, what are these things? And there were knitting needles in this big glass jar. Okay, yeah, because we were gonna talk about how you started knitting. Yeah, and I think I was asking my mom and I carry, um, I still have it. I'm, a, I'm not gonna be ashamed. I have a blankie still. <laughs> um, my husband is aware of the blankie. It's a crochet blanket that I think like my great aunt made or somehow it was gifted to me when I was a baby. It was just like, what is it, Linus? He drags the blanket around yep, everywhere. Yep, yep. So that was me as a kid. Um, it didn't go outside, um, but that was crochet. So my mom taught me how to make granny squares. Okay. So that's probably why I'm a continental knitter. Yep. Everything's on the, on the left hand side. Left hand side. Um, and then I didn't do it after high school. I think I made some hats and things. Um, but then... But she knew how to crochet. She knew how to crochet and she knew how to knit. So I learned the basic stitches. Okay. Um, anything crochet now, I have to like look up everything <laughs> to go, oh, it's chain yeah. two or something like yeah. that. Um, but then around 2004, 2005-ish, um, I bumped into someone who was just doing my hair. I was a hair model briefly and oh. had to finally start going to a salon. So I bumped into um, a very nice gentleman named Will, um, who now works at the hair police but it, we were like fast friends. So through the course of him cutting my hair for the first time, we learned we were both starting to knit. Oh, wow. And we both liked um, these anime movies and we ended up, this is unheard of with adults making friends. He cut my hair, 
it was, oh, what are you doing later? Oh, I'm going to go see this movie. It's like, I would like, like, somehow we oh my gosh. going to a movie that night together. Um, and then we went on this journey of starting to make toys. <laughs> and that leads me to my first little guy. Oh, my gosh. So I'm not sure how I'll best hold to hold him. So this is an octopus, if you can't tell. It's oh, got this crazy tell. Nautilus head thing happening. It's knit. You do all the arms first, and then you do the body, and then you sew it all kind of together. You knit this bottom part, which connects all the legs. It's really fun. I didn't realize how complicated it was. Um, I just kind of went for it. And I had all these acrylic yarns, too, which are great for these toys. Yes, yes. Um, it's got a little pilling. It's been loved. This is one of the ones that has stayed home versus being gifted out. Um, so this one is by um, Hansi Singh, and she made this book called Ami Gurumi Knits. Okay, yep. And I think anything that was a sea creature, I made it. Um, so I think there was like a Dumbo, out, or was it an elephant squid or Dumbo squid? Okay. Dumbo octopus? I, I'm losing yep. my aquatic animal names. <laughs> <laughs> but then they had like a Nautilus shell, a hermit crab. So she did a whole book full. She did a whole book full. And then um, I think she took a break for knitting because she went back to school. I think she was going to become a doctor or get some PhD or she was an engineer. Whatever field, it kind of made sense because of how technical she had to look at it. Yeah. I think looking back on it, I think I was doing short rows. Yeah. <laughs> and, and things with the legs. Um, it was saying pick up stitches. I was like, I don't know what that means. So I kind of improvised. But um, that was one of my early knits to which yeah. so wild. Um, but I think that would be maybe like a advanced medium yeah. kind of knit. And do your boy did your boys like the little toys they, when, when they were born then? Did they kind of inherit them? So I actually took a break for knitting around oh. the time they were little. Because oh, I yeah. was just so busy. No, it was yeah. my first no, kid. For sure. Um and then I went on a cruise. I went on a music cruise and I met some go figure musicians and other really lovely people. And they got me inspired again. So around 2014, I came home and I one of the first things I knit was like a little pea pod with two peas in it for okay. a friend. And then I started making more octopus, octopi. Yep. I'm not sure what the plural is. Pusses. Yeah. Um, and then uh, some sea turtles uh, for Brenda's, his daughter. And so it, it kind of just got that engine revved again to yeah. just start making. Because I, I can't make music. I mean... I can yeah. clap and do some yeah. probably background vocals if yeah. you need me. Um, but uh, it went back to toys. Um, so this one was made after my boys were seeing me kind of like, I want one too. Yes. Yeah. And it's pretty cool because now Michael's 12. So my older son's 12. And this, I had to go dig through the stuffed animals on his bed to yep, find, find him. And I was like, very. Very touched that it was still in the yeah. pile that oh, gets yeah. to stay on his bed. Yeah, because so. Kylie's got some upstairs and. You know, I made her the um, the giraffe, Susan B. Anderson's oh. giraffe, and it's huge, and it, you know, but it's still sitting up there, and and um, then I made some of the smaller ones, but I made Sir Cephalopod, which was one the one that has the little monocle with the little hat on top of it, <laughs> and I'm not a toy knitter, like I at all, and I go, I went up there to do the toys on this podcast way back, and I was shocked at how many there were, but you mostly knit them. At yep. the time, you didn't crochet um, amigurumi me like some people are. Not like... for a long time later. Um, I did make a pineapple for a family. Um, oh, fun. Uh, a friend, um, Dustin Kensrew, who just had a new album out. Um, we were riding in a car, and he saw me like I had been working on an octopus. He's like, I need to buy that. And I think it was before his first <laughs> daughter was born. I was like, you can't buy that. Like, here you go. <laughs> um, so I gave it to him. And when I bumped into his wife a long time later, um, she said that she put the octopus in like the baby keepsake box. Oh. So she had, that was so sweet. And I was amazed that a dog didn't need it. They have, they've had critters. Yes. And that's generally what happens. Like the dogs are interested yes. and then gets ripped apart yeah. and they feel terrible and they never tell me. But I know. Um, so I love that about gifting and giving. So it was kind of miraculous that I made one for my kids that yeah. stuck around. Yeah. No, that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. Okay, Garden Variety by Lisa Ross. Oh, so um, during the lockdown portion of COVID, um, I really got into 
um, sock knitting. Um, and so that was my introduction to Lisa. And sock knitting I found was really nice because when you'd have these unicorn skeins that you don't really know what to oh, do with yeah. and you're visiting yeah. these yep. yarn shops yep. and you're like, okay, this. Yep. Or the, my fingering weight, what unicorn. single skeins, right? Like just want, like, what am I going to do? You want to support a business and uh, you're like, <laughs> Yeah, it's a couple pretty, yeah, I don't yeah. have a sweater in mind yet. Um, and so I was doing a number of Lisa K. Ross or Paper Daisy Creations um, pieces. And then suddenly she had a garden variety mystery knit along. Um, have you shared what mystery knit alongs are? Yes, yes. We just talked about it um, again, but it where you get the clues one step at a time. And Lisa is a friend of the podcast. I knit some of her things and I've talked about her a number of times because she shared some pattern writing and pattern publication information. And then I shared some teaching information with her. So she and I have done some Zooms and some phone calls around, help, how do I do this? What can, you know, and that kind of thing. And so I have talked about her quite a bit, but, and I think um, a number of our people have done several of the different knit alongs, but if you're brand new, a mystery knit along is where you don't know exactly what you're knitting and you get clues each week usually, sometimes they're two weeks apart, where you just have to knit a section and then you mm -hmm. have to wait for the next clue and then you knit the next section. So is that how you knit it? Because you can knit yeah. a mystery knit along after the fact, like once it all comes out and someone sees it, you can get all the steps yep. in one and kind of already know what it's gonna be and pick your colors that way. Yep, um, so with, with how it was introduced to me, she at least explained that it was gonna be a larger size cowl. It was gonna be rectangular because you could have various shapes. Yep. So then at least you had an idea of kind of your commitment. Yes. And then um, I was introduced to Emma's yarn. Yep. And so it was these pieces of, I trust Lisa's patterns. This yep. is gonna be new. And um, to use a term that I learned from meeting you on the, <laughs> <laughs> on the cruise, I was asked, are you a product or a process knitter? And I think last week, Andrea was your your product knitter, yeah. like banging them yeah. out. Yeah. I want to learn something. Like yeah. every single time I want to be challenged to figure it out. So I was actually really looking for like a sampler, like for stitching. They have all these beautiful yeah. samplers you do. Yeah. And then you have a kind of a tea towel or something yeah. at that. Yep. Yeah. And then when I discovered Mystery Knit Alongs can offer that, I was like, this this is my answer. Yes. Um, so I um, I have a question for you. Okay. So this was my first and in, big investment in yarn and it was so stressful. And I, it was mostly the price tag and ordering yarn I had not touched. Yeah. How much do you think that investment was? <laughs> oh. For a shawl. Um, 120? That's not too bad. 161. So, or that's at least what this listed as now. There might be a little bit yeah. of inflation in there, but it was like a huge hurdle for me. That's a, a lot, lot right? of trust. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I put those pieces together of Lisa's going to write a solid pattern. Yep. I'm going to learn stuff and then I'm going to invest in this beautiful yarn. And so I made this. And cowl. hope that they go together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I think the only reason that I guess that is because I was, that's you know, I'm just thinking yeah. like three or four skeins at 30 yeah. to $40 each at today's price point. That's what things are going to cost yeah. you, right? Like that's just, if you're doing indie dyed yarn, mm -hmm. you're paying a premium, not that you can't knit it with something else, but you're, and that's my newest knitters who meet on Wednesdays at the Byerly's. Um, that's their biggest jumping point yeah. right now is I, I don't want to spend that much. Like mm -hmm. I, I can't, I'm not going to buy a $20 skein of yarn. Like they're just, yeah. it's still that shock, right? Of the price point of things mm -hmm. and then eventually I think quite a bit of that goes away and you get into that more like I'm going to spend so much time with this yarn and they're saying things like this yarn is really like it splits in two when I'm knitting and then you go split a yarn and they're like yeah. is that a thing and you're like mm -hmm. yeah. right oh this yarn's really fuzzy a uh, single ply yeah. yarn uh yeah it's gonna get really right like they start to learn and they're like oh, oh this is the value for what I'm not, mm -hmm. but it's a huge detriment for people. Like they, they're just like, there's no way I would ever spend that much money mm -hmm. on a skein. It also motivates you to be more creative about where you're getting your yarn, yarn from. So I think with those sweaters you're selling that, hey, you could just 
reclaim this yes, yarn. Yes, yes, yeah. And so people yeah. do that on the internet, bless them and their time and efforts, but they'll go through and find beautiful cashmere sweaters and they're like, they're done in such a way they see it's one piece yep. so they won't have to splice all these ends together and they'll reclaim that yarn yep. for other things. Yep. It could be a $17 sweater, probably far less because it's in a thrift store, but right. they can rip it out. All these reuse different the yarn. creative yep. ways and there's nothing wrong with ac acrylic yarn. Like I make yeah. lots of my very colorful toys with it. Yeah. Um, I don't recommend trying to spit splice no. it. It will not work. Yeah. Yep. No. <laughs> maybe work. don't do that in a coffee shop with your friends. Um, but maybe it's enjoy. It was enjoyable for them yeah. to see me uh, put that all together. <laughs> They're like, is that an acrylic yarn? And it was like, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you're yeah, like, it did yeah, not no, work. Won't nope. stay. All right, um, let's so, look at. Oh, you're gonna hold that up I, half and half. I think kinda. so. Yeah. So maybe if you can help me. So I can't honestly remember how it started. I think it might have started with the V's, mm -hmm. and I had to make two of them. And then Lisa came up with this incredible construction. So Corey actually has an end. Yep. And then let's see here. So way we'll just, we'll just so go from large. one side to the other yep. yep and then you see all these different colors so in her pattern she'll explain use color main color one two three etc and then this one um I, it was i have very little yarn left over so she's being really thoughtful um like you've done with may shawl to try and use as much of the yarn as possible without having too much yarn chicken in <laughs> right so that people aren't panicked but that they're like well, this is a waste. I used 1.25 and, and I, now I have eight, you know, 80% of the skein left where it's just not what you want. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah. how many skeins did you have to buy? Do you, is it four I or think five? I think it may have been five, like two of the pink. Was it a then, mini skein set? Um, or I believe were they... it was a full skein set. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, they would all be here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then plus the two, um, oh, this two is main color ones. Lovely with the, the chain. chain. Yeah. yeah, that's really. And I love that. Really graphic. People at the beginning of the mystery knit alongs, they'll just post the colors of their yarns, and they're so diverse. And then um, I took a class with Lisa, and we laid out my version and her version. She does a lot of rainbow. Yep. With the yes. Yeah. Um, so it was really fun. And then with this with this group and trying to figure out how to how to put your colors in a rainbow when you don't necessarily have rainbow colors. I learned to line them up and take a black and white picture yep, yep. and check to see. Yep. And I think I might've switched these, this last couple or the gray yep. and the, one of the navies just because yeah, sometimes they're super close. It's hard to tell. Really hard to There's tell. There's not really a wrong answer either. No, there <laughs> isn't. No, I definitely, I would say, but Lisa's really the queen of mini skeins. Like she, loves putting together lots of mini skein packs and doing different techniques like this. And she's kind of become um, the person that does a lot of these rectangular shawls with lots of stuff going on, mm -hmm. like the, kind of like the sampler, yeah. right? That sampler, because my um, uh, 12 Days of Knitting, which was a mystery advent a number of years ago, is a, a lace sampler. So nice. it's 12 lace samples so you, you learn different lace stitches but then you repeat it again in a oh in a mini God. skein set and um and she does more of the uh, technical putting together oh like, like how it's constructed yeah, yeah the construction the good i couldn't think of the word but her construction is interesting right like mine was done more in like a scarf shape and you just did one section and then the next and then the next and tried to just for a sampler situation, mm -hmm. but her, like she turns it on the end. Yep. So we had like two triangles uh, that then made an hourglass and then you pick up stitches on an edge and somehow it becomes connected a rectangle. Them. Yes, like, yes, exactly. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So. She does some really beautiful. This is gorgeous. Your colors are perfect. They're really nice. pretty together. And then I saved this one cause it was still lockdown time and I was really, um, I had the goal of putting this in the state fair. So this is one of the items. Um, I think I submitted like nine and this is one I think I placed in four different categories, which was wild. Yeah. But I got second place at the Minnesota State Fair. Which is a big deal. So that was because we cool. have a very competitive so state competitive, fair. So yeah. competitive. So many beautiful things. Yeah. And it, 
I don't know how they judge things. So I'm just going to put out there, like, don't get discouraged if you don't get a ribbon. Like, keep yeah. putting your stuff in. Because I think as a fair goer, not as avid as some people, it's just so inspiring to see other people's work, whether or not somebody judged it. As Please getting just a ribbon. Please putting yeah. it in there. Because there's also different categories. There's, like, crochet. There's hand sewing. There's embroidery. It's, yeah. it's fascinating. My one of this sweater was on a canoe. It was like draped on a canoe. It was very, very fun. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I have entered in the past. I used to enter, and um, and it it is kind of fun just to see your stuff displayed at the fair. I think that's yeah. a neat feeling. Okay, high society. Oh, socks, socks. So these are also um, a Lisa K. Ross pattern. Oh, I oh, also oh, put close. them in the state fair. Oh, that's a good picture. Um, I thought they nice really light. stood out just due to the the color. Um, it's from a pattern set for Lisa. Um, it was these. I think it was the socks of Twilight. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure. Um, yep, socks of Twilight, it's just like the books. Um, so they had different themes around them. She does some really fun, um, like Anne of Green Gables, socks of Narnia, yep. and then. Princess Bride was a book, yeah. although people know it as a movie, like it was a book too. Um, she has all these great She does sets themes and, and then she does four socks based on one theme. Yeah. And then they come out as a set heavily discounted for very the four. Generous, yeah, yeah, very she's very generous with her sock sets. So if you're really into different kinds of socks and you love a good theme, mm -hmm. which I think we all do. Yeah. It's helpful, and then I think sometimes there are people reading the, I don't, unless they're audio booking, I don't know how they're doing the socks and the books at yeah. the same time, yeah. but it's one of those fascinating things, and um, I really enjoyed that these were, um, this introduced me to Lolo Did It? Yes. That's it. Yep. Yep. Um, but this was my introduction to Yak being mm. in in the socks yep. and it was so smooth it's got a little bit of shine to it oh yeah and then this red has some uh, just subtle variegation yeah. in it it's got little bits of um and it almost well, kind of never like show up good on, highlights. on camera but yeah the the yak i i'm just loving the 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 feel of the yak and it's not itchy yes it's just so smooth right whereas i think alpaca can make things soft but it also makes things itchy for some people for some, yeah. whereas the yak i haven't found that at all that's I wonderful think it's, i think that's really good news for people who have or discovering that they have different allergies to yeah. things. I mean, or not hugging yaks. <laughs> or sensitivity, right? Like, Absolutely. oh, my neck. I just can't with my neck. You it's know, people close. don't yeah. know, right? And then they're like, oh, well, I, I can't ever use mohair. I can't ever use alpaca. And then they touch yak and they're like, oh, I can That's wear so this. Bad. Yeah, not so um, bad at all. Yeah, thankfully with becoming more familiar f to fibers, I'm no longer just like in a store rubbing a skein on my face. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if anyone else does that. Um... But I, I really have enjoyed her patterns, and that's part of what made me trust that she would do a great job with a mystery knit along. So this is, this was my first one, and then I've done two others um, with her. And the timing sometimes it's just not the right timing, and that might oh. be why I'm just not doing one of hers. But I'm always following because she's great. Yeah, no, <laughs> she's very, very and talented. So nice. yeah. yeah, very talented. And I do think if you go and look at. A bunch of her work you see the aesthetic and so you kind of know what you're getting right oh, yeah like it, it's not an aesthetic that changes drastically you know there are some designers who just design really intricate cables and all of her cables so you mm -hmm. know if you're going to knit a mystery with them you're going to get a cable right with her you can kind of you get an idea you know it's going to be surprising yes but you know kind of where you're headed yes right? absolutely and um Maybe I'll hop to another set yeah. of socks by her. Um, this is a beautifully strong uh, pattern. And I love doing this one with a, a highly oh. variegated yarn because when you're doing these lifted yep. stitches, it just places that in another spot. Um, and so with those unicorn skeins, this has been a great use. So I think I've made these three or four times and I brought these to was the fall one is it yarn over uh -huh. yeah but lisa has used this heel a number of times it's yep. a nice she, it's a nice heel she changes the heels up it she has so if the out of the four patterns it might be two top down and then two, two bottom toe up. up yep and so you're really getting a chance to try them out um yep. 
I feel like I learn something each time and go, oh, I like this one, or this one's a little trickier. It's not my favorite, but it did it. And ooh, Lavender Loon yarn. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. we didn't mention that. Yep. She doesn't do a ton of variegated. She's been doing more, what was Solid? Tonals. Tonal colors. Um, she used to do more variegated, yep. and I don't. I think they're hard for people to purchase. Yep. Unless you have um, samples made up for what it's going to look like. People don't. I think people are it's more likely. Best, they're cautious. Yep. Yep. I think it, her tonals have really taken a front seat mm -hmm. more recently. Mm -hmm. A Wool and Honey by oh. Andrea Maori. We've got this it right one. here. Um, this one was super fun. Um, there's this network that makes these honeycomb shapes and it goes across the back in a similar like upper section um some people have figured out ways to extend this lower if they wanted it to wrap lower than say like the the armpit level yep um and this is just created by thoughtfully how many wraps um you would make in that row and then you kind of drop them and then you pick them up later, later. So you yeah. have these really big loopy stitches that are hanging, hanging out. out. Yep, <laughs> yep. So they start out smaller and then they get bigger as you go down. But if you can see here, this is not attached in any way. Yep. It's just a big loop in there. <laughs> so it, it's laying on top of the fabric. And then the whole thing is knit in garter. Um, it's knit in a back and forth method actually so yeah it creates the garter look but you're like knitting a row and then you're purling right a back. row to do that and so in the across the back because i did i did the right thing and i took my two skeins and alternated and alternated the skeins so that i didn't have um color accidental color blocking yeah um but it was it was really fun to knit i had less fun the second time i knit it because i got a little uh overconfident and stop <laughs> looking at the pattern as much. Um, but that is a technique that um, a couple of people have made on hats where you get garter stitch, but you work halfway and then you go back and then so that you're not, um, you're not working at pearl rows, long yeah. pearl rows. Yeah. And then I think for the sleeves, I think it was just like the garter knitting because there's, there was yeah. no pattern. Yeah. So like, um, uh, do you remember what yarn this is? This is Emma's yarn. Oh, okay. And it was in a wine color. Let's see if I can find that. Um, that heavy pour, like wine. Oh, wine. <laughs> okay. So Emma is a yarn dyer out of Florida. She and her family now are all involved, but she did a school project where she dyed some yarn. And then it became a thing where they sold it to a local yarn store. Her parents were involved in the local yarn store. Now I think they own the local yarn store. Um, and then her sister became involved in it. And so now it's a whole family affair, but she has yarns everywhere. And I was just down in Northfield on Sunday teaching and they have a whole wall of Emma's yarn. And oh, above nice. it, it says Emma's yarn. And I was like, oh. I've not seen that in a shop. Like I know Harriet Allen has, has some, but they had a wall of Emma's that's yarn. Wonderful. And I was like, wow, that's impressive that they have that much yarn. And they're out of Florida, so that's great to see it up here. Yeah, I met them at Rhinebeck. They have a trunk show at the Perfect Blend um, coffee shop in so Sagardies. And they, during the Rhinebeck weekend, they have a trunk show. And so we went in and met them and um, chatted with them. I have quite a bit of their yarn. I, I really do like her, her palette. It's really nice. Um, so this is in a fingering um, weight, and it doesn't split. It just—it's really a nice, nice smooth, twist. Yeah, smooth knit. So I've really enjoyed the the Emma's yarn. Yeah, this is—it's just really pretty. The purple is stunning. That we blue and purple are people's most popular colors, so <laughs> people will love that. Okay, snow pine. Oh, this one's really fun. So um, sometimes you get inspired by a photo or a yeah. skein of yarn, yeah. and you're like, how can I use that or highlight this? And it's kind of hard to see, but maybe it, it'll be okay. So back here, they just maybe look like the, are they called flea stitches? Yep, yep. But when you, um, so if we hold it closer, they're actually neon colors. Yep. And so um, this one, it was spun right round, is the company that makes the colorful yarn. Yep. And then the base colors are just Madeline Tosh. But it was a skein for gray in the front, one for in the back. I split a black skein in half, and then I had my colorful yarn. I think I'm missing one. Yep. So it, oh, yep. So four 
whole skeins and then when you're knitting you're going back and forth with intarsia oh, yeah, on yep, one on of the sides yep, it must be this yep. this side here yeah it's not the best i tried yeah um, no it's you have to switch yarns and and yep, hold and it and you yep. go backwards so your colorful one's going the whole way around um or i'm sorry this and backwards yeah. but i had five skeins of yarn that were active and I wish that, that color wheel thing existed at the time, but it was constantly like undoing oh, the skein. It's just, yeah. But it turned into this super cute like baseball tee yes, kind yeah. of look. Yeah. Um, so I will just say that eight, seven years ago, I tried to design a baseball tee. Um, I have yarn, speckled yarn and plain yarn, and I wanted the body to be speckled and the sleeves to be solid. And I couldn't get the, like, without doing intarsia. Like, I wanted, but I didn't oh, want to have to yeah. have seam it. I was like, there's got to be a way. I worked on it and worked on it. And it never became a design because, really, your best bet <laughs> is just do, do the a one spot yeah, of intarsia. Where intarsia, yes. yep, where you just carrying, you know, carrying your color or making the sleeves separate and then just seaming them in, making your body separate. And I, I, I wanted to figure it out. There's a... There's a kid's sweater that has an envelope neck that it like folds across the shoulder like this. And so it opens up, but then it closes, you know, around the neck. And I thought I can make this work and I just never could get it. So this is really fun to see because I would love to knit that. Would love to. It's really fun. And this is one that I look forward to knitting again, probably in a larger size just to have more like ease. Yes. Because, you know, you don't yep. have everything yep. to do all the time. Um. And then I do have another spun right round. It's a different color, but it's so bright and it's all these different spots. And what I really enjoyed in making this is kind of like discovering what the next yeah. stitch would be as yeah. your yarn goes. Yeah. With the next bright yeah. pop. But I know as, as a knitter, I haven't felt comfortable yet. Even though I've made all these things, I'm showing you things. Anything where I have to make separate parts and sew them. And I sew things. Yeah. I'm just like, no, I'll just do top down. Yep. Or like bottom up yep. and attach sleeves. Yep. I mean, people like don't like scary. to sew a salty air. Oh, this one's another layer. I know I want to yarn. knit this. I, I I talked to Sam. I'm like, I'm making this. So this is out of Lavender Loon single ply yarn. And believe it or not, Minnesota, well, I wore this to the state fair was where that was going. So it gets, it can be hot. Yes. But yes. I went in the afternoon, evening time. I knew I was staying for a concert. So um, I wore a light t-shirt underneath, yeah. underneath this and then wore it at the fair. It, oh, it's yeah. so it's... nice. And that was, what's it, August? And yes. August. So yeah. it wasn't too hot. Yeah. Um, no, it's lovely. I definitely used the two, used two active skeins at one time just because they're different, beautiful Is It's knit top down, right? I yes. assume. Yeah. It's short sleeves. I, I definitely want to make this. I She, the original one was like in an orangey rust. Yep. And that's the one that I just was like, oh, I have to cast that on. And I just haven't bit the bullet to cast it on yet because I have so many. Uh, A little bit of work, work in progress, yeah. backlog. Yes, to get caught up on. And then the and then... designs just jump in the way always. They're always, you know. I just accepted yarn from another company and I'm just like, if you would just say no to yarn, you know, yarn support from one company, you could get a couple of things off the needles, but. <laughs> but it's so exciting. I'm yes. trying to get those boxes. And then they're like, could you have this done by April 10th? And I'm like, what sure. Wow. I do know Samantha just released, uh, Samantha, is it Gearin? Yeah. She just releases in a long sleeve in Sam's DK weight yarn. So the, the yarn that I use for May shawl is gonna become a salty air long, long sleeve sweater. Oh, fun! Yeah. That would be lovely in yeah. the yak. Yeah. Oh. So it's gonna be so cozy. So I'll be ready for the fall. Yeah. I mean, we're about ready to start spring. Oh. Um. I, I'm glad you brought that because that just reminds me it needs to go to the top of my list. It's so nice. I and love it, a short it's a nice sleeve. Carry along yeah. or watching TV kind of sweater. Um, Ooh. So I love this. This is the Archer sweater, and. Um, this is beautiful. It's like an I cord. Boy, you did that it's... really nicely. Thank you. Yeah. This one Here, I'll is show it up by closer. Elizabeth Doherty. Um, yep. And it was so fun to knit. Look at it's that. It's not oh. a start after 11 p.m. kind of sweater. Because <laughs> you'd read a direction and you're like, I'm not 
is this saying just cast on and then you cut your yarn? I think that's what it's saying. <laughs> and it did. And then you end up doing some magic and you knit these <sighs> different parts down and you knit the back and it, it all magically comes together. And does the original pattern come in stripes and solid? Is yes, that yeah, how it's meant? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. for me, I wanted the stripes to really show off the yarn. I found this at the 2023 Sweater Camp yep. yarn it put on and, and um, highlighted these colors. So I looked at these yarns like the whole weekend and then I came with my shopping wish list sort of for sweaters yeah. and I pounced on these and these yeah um, the contrast is really nice it's super pretty and it's life in the long grass it's also a yak um yak blend yeah I can um, feel I it there's a little nylon and then the rest is wool um I wear this often for me I extended the sleeves so I think I stopped at the body and then finished the sleeves and then went back to the body and I was just like, I'm going to use the rest of the yarn until I run out. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I, love I wear the, it often. Love and the it has length a little of it. split for the hip. Oh, so that's nice. really handy. So yeah, that's one of my most worn sweaters. Um, it might end up in a state fair if I don't make it super pilly. <laughs> I love that U shape. That is really striking. Super fun. Yep. And so you, you pick up and you're going yep. back and forth. This is the Hidafude. Uh, cardigan yep by Hiroko Fukatsu yep yep and you have a story I do so I learned about this at the first sweater camp in 2022 I was walking around wearing a sweater and people kept asking me is this the Hido Fude <laughs> and I was like pardon me I'm not <laughs> sure what you're saying I was like I don't think so um and then some very kind soul helped me look it up on Ravelry so I could add it and look it up later and um then that was towards the end of that camp. And then the next year, Corey had a sweater library. So 2023. Yep. And I was able to try on one that was like a rainbowy color. I think your friend made yep. it for you. Yep, and did. then it was modified though. Yep. Longer and wider. Yep. And the original one ends up being kind of shorter, really open yep. front. Yep. And when I took your class, um, the 50 Shades of Sweaters. <laughs> yep. So I, not only had I seen it and tried it on, <laughs> I got to learn more about kind of the modifications and then your tip about looking online for people that are about your same shape. So they'll, they'll give it away by saying this model is wearing a this size sweater with this much ease. ease. Yep. And so you can kind of start putting that together or looking through the projects of people who have done it. And so I figured out I wanted more drape. Yep. Did I have to do that by super modifying the yep. pattern or not? And for me, normally I'd, I'd knit a medium. And for my modifications to get the length, yep. so looking at the pattern, this is actually an extra large. And it, I think it's just a couple more repeats in the arms, yep. maybe. Yep. Um, and I wouldn't have thought to do that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure... I would wear it as much if it had come up shorter. Yeah, because the one that Megan, the first one Megan knit was very small. And I, it it just didn't cover my bust at all. And it, it just sat like this the whole time, you know, way back. It just didn't even have <laughs> like hello, a, the, the fabric, right? Yeah. Like it just didn't even have any fabric up there. And I said, there's just no way that that. And so she, you know, she did some modifications to make it longer and wider and you wouldn't want to do that with every sweater. Not every sweater you would choose would you say, well, I'll just make an extra large, right? Mm -hmm. But with this sweater, it it works because this, um, the piece that happens right here is such, the ribbing is so tight that goes, it fits, makes it a fitted sweater right in through here so that it doesn't become this shoulder pad Bunched too big thing. The, yeah. yeah. And I think the pattern name is translates to one stroke. Yep. So really I had two ends to weave in. I spit spliced in the middle, but it's where you start and where you end. Yeah. Because it's just one continuous piece. It's beautifully designed. Yeah. Yeah. There's a gajillion people who have made this. You cast on all the way across the whole yep. back and the make sleeve. Make a big rectangle. Make that. And so you're not doing shaping and lace. It's just this big rectangle. Yep. Yep. So it was really fun. And as people had told me, and I was like, yeah, right, is you will memorize the pattern, you can see it, and then you just kind of cruise along, you do your increases and things around the waist. Um, 
I also put this in the state fair. I got fourth place, which is still a big deal. Yeah. There's so many talented people. No, yeah, um, for sure. And then this is done um, in Madeline Tosh in the Stephen B. Blue. So you can only find it there. So if you're in love with it, um, I think this is a great color for a lot of people's skin yes. tones. And yeah. It's, it's just yeah. really it's fun. It's just really lovely. Bring it in so everyone can kind of see that color. It's just beautiful. I remember watching you work on it, and it was just, yeah, amazing. And this has been to Philly. I've been sitting on a couch <laughs> watching the World Series, like, working on it. And so that's been kind of fun to bring it different places and have those memories. Yeah, yeah. and being a part For of sure. that. So, um, Do you want to talk a little bit about the shawl you have on? Oh, yes. This is the Scottish Highland shawl, and I knit yeah. this with... She came in with it, and I'm like, that... It's beautiful. So Thank you. Um, so this makes a, should I take it off? Yeah, maybe? yeah, we'll hold it up. It's going to be very warm. Um, so this has Sam from Lavender Loon's Everlong variegated yarn. And I wanted something to come out for the contrasting colors. And I found a Three Irish Girls, another Minnesota yarn, um, to do the lace work here. And I think you can make it in another size with additional um, like repeats. panels yeah, yep. for the repeats. Yep. And then it was really fun to block out the lace here. You just pin it and you kind of yep. pull it a little farther. Yep. Um, but that's by Kay Hopkins. It looked so pretty when you came in right away Thank with you. your little gray uh, sweater. It just looked, And then yeah. there's a little, was it Stelina? Yep, or Stelina. A little, just a little sparkle. So I don't think she did that with all the skeins. So I had a few of those, um, but really yeah. fun. Yeah. I'll pull that all together, so. Really pretty. Thanks for inspiring me to wear this. It kind of no. stays in the safe little uh, package <laughs> with all my other knit things that aren't in the, the cycle of just wearing yeah. them every other day. So. I know. I know. It's hard to pick, but you did a really um, eclectic mix, which is right. super nice, right? <laughs> no, I think that's great that people got to see a toy and some socks and a shawl and a sweater, right? That I mean, that is why I'm having friends come drive across the city and come out here to sit with me in my little studio. But I, I do appreciate that you did that for me. And I'm going to ask you to test knit this little shawlette that has to be done. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm going to be busy soon. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to thank her so much for being willing. I'm like, hey, have you had a chance to look at that email? Let me know if you could come. Because which is fine if you don't. I have other people that I will continue to ask. I do want to have Sam on. I want to do a Zoom with Sam and have Sam come on. And, and Oh, that's right. <laughs> One yeah. time we were on Knit the River, and I brought a sweater. I was like, I think I can't save this. What do you think? And they're like, let's undo it. Oh, and, and we just... We cranked it out. Yep. There were no tears. There probably would have been tears. Right. But having these friends around just joyfully yes. going like, That's the something. best thing about being ripping at knitting group is so, when other people help you do it and then it's just done you're like well that's over right yeah. there's nothing i could do to save it and it needed to just be ripped out so i could either start over or put it in something else and so yeah that no. was so sweet that they helped me and they've been through it so they knew the pain and anguish <laughs> of like i need to delete these hours of my life oh, i know <laughs> oh i know it's so sad but okay that's what friends are for. we're gonna say goodbye <laughs> i thank you so much for coming tiffany and this was great thanks Corey. Hi everybody, I am back and just going to share the second half of the show today. I have a couple of things to catch you up on, some audiobooks, a question that someone asked, and so we're just going to go through those. Um, the question this week was how to make a better palm or tassel. I get this all the time and um, we talked about it with Stacy in uh, her video that she cannot make a pom-pom or a tassel for the life of her and I had to make tassels for the maize shawl, so I got those back out to talk to you briefly about how to make a better pom-pom or tassel. And the key is more yarn. More yarn than you possibly think you could need. So you wrap and you wrap and you wrap and you wrap 100 times, and then you wrap some more. And as soon as you think you're done wrapping, wrap some more. The more bulk you add, the better the pom-poms shape the fluff, all of that. I'm sure there's a number of wraps out there somewhere. Um, there's some pom-pom pros who make beautiful pom-poms out on Instagram that they use for like a three-inch pom-pom or four-inch pom-pom. They wrap it a certain number of times. And it's just what I have found in teaching it to my beginner knitters when we make 
uh, pom pom for the hat that they finish in class is that, and we use our phone <laughs> and we wrap it around our phone like this and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I just say, keep wrapping, <laughs> keep wrapping. Um, I don't really have an end point, but I know 100 wraps is not often enough if you're using like worsted weight yarn. So that's just the tip I have <laughs> for those of you that struggle to make nice pom-poms and tassels for different things. What have I been watching? I am watching The Gentleman on Netflix, and I watched the first couple of episodes, and it's kind of a dark comedy. Um, the premise is great. I'm just not sure I love it. So I stopped watching maybe after four or five episodes and then I started up again. I don't know, I can't decide if I like it or not. So chime in if you've watched the whole season of The Gentleman. Um, then I watched Made in Italy, which was a little um, one and a half hour movie. It was cute, it was good. I liked it. Uh, I watched the documentary that some uh, one of you shared with me. It's called The Last Repair Shop, and it's about repairing musical instruments in Los Angeles for uh, students to use free in the schools, and it's quite good. It was on YouTube, and you just type in The Last Repair Shop. Um, so I would say that that was definitely worth, worth watching. And then I started watching The Resident, I didn't realize it had so many seasons. Like I see it come up in my Netflix all the time and I loved like Grey's Anatomy and The Good Wife and Carrie Agos is the main, uh, and he's just, a, they're all kind of bad people. or just kind of jerks in the first few episodes. Then I think they get more likable and I don't know if they got negative feedback or what, but anyway. Um, I did go to South Dakota this weekend, and when I got there on Friday, um, we had had some snow overnight, and we haven't had snow all winter, So, but we drove out of it on our way to South Dakota, and when we got there Friday night, I had to teach right away from 5.30 to 8.30 at Prairie Road Yarn, so hi to the Prairie Road Yarn folks who might be coming over to watch it for the first time. Then I taught again on Sunday afternoon from 2 to 5 and we got a major snowstorm on Sunday. But I wanna say hi to those Mitchell, South Dakota ladies that sat at the back table who called themselves the spicy table because they were awesome. They were all really good knitters and knew how to do a lot of the fixing mistakes in the class that I was teaching, um, but they were fun. I love when you have a group of women, or men, I love when you have a group of people in your classes who are having a good time while they're there. You know, they're enjoying it. They're laughing. And um, I met a gal um, who was a big crocheter and she doesn't like knitting much. And she said, I think this might help me like knitting more. She was just enjoying herself, which made me enjoy myself. So that was a lot of fun too. Um, but then on Saturday night, we went to a play for my niece. Um, I didn't know she was gonna be in a play. But it was a 30-minute freshman play, and my parents had asked us if we wanted to go, and we were like, yeah, we'll go. So we went over, and it was in their small theater, and um, she played one of the main characters. There were um, four girls that played the, in the play. And um, so that was really fun, but we got home, and my parents said, well, what should we watch? And I said, well, I don't know. And they said, well, what have you been watching? I said, The Resident. And they said, oh, we watched that. And I said, well, okay. And then they turned it on and I said, well, you've already watched it. We won't remember. <laughs> they said, we won't remember what we watched. We'll watch it again. So then we figured out what episode I was on and we watched an episode of that. And then March Madness was on kind of all weekend. Um, so we watched that on one night, Saturday night, we watched South Dakota State play, the girls basketball. Um, that was a bummer. That's my dad's alma mater, and he loves their sports teams, and they lost, so that was kind of a bummer. But we drove back on some of the most treacherous roads we've driven on in a long time. We probably should have spent the night, but we heard that it was going to be bad on Monday and snowing, too, and it's not. It's raining. We got a lot of snow. I'll take a picture of my front yard right now and then I'll put it in here. This is my view out the front yard. Can I get a good, yeah, I can get a good picture. <laughs> I'll put a picture in. Um, it looks like we got, you know, 
six inches, maybe seven. I don't even know. It's really piled up. It's very wet. We need all the moisture we can get, but the, we drove through slush, sleet, rain, snow, giant snowflakes coming down. And we were fine until the sun went down. I mean, we weren't, it wasn't easy, but we were doing okay until the sun went down and then it got really hard to see. The snow was hitting, you know, coming at the windshield and we couldn't see where the ruts were in the road. And we were on major highways, but it took us five hours to get home. And then once we got here, Ross had to plow the driveway because it was pretty piled up at the top and he didn't want to drive over it because then it's so hard to get up. And so he left me in the car in the street and he ran up the driveway and got out the snowblower and blew a path. And then he realized how wet it was. So it was hard work. And so then I sat in the car for another half an hour waiting for him. I should have trudged. I should have gotten out, but I didn't have on snow boots. And so I just sat in the car. I called my parents, told them we got back safely, texted a couple of people that we got back that wanted to know. So yeah, it was it was really treacherous. We pushed slush on the road and there were no plows out. We left Sioux Falls. It usually takes about three and a half hours. We left Sioux Falls and we did not see a plow until we hit almost the Twin Cities. And then there was one on our side of the road for a few minutes and then he turned around and went back the other way. And then we saw plows as we got into the city. We saw several plows on the side, you know, off to the sides and stuff. But it made the going really hard because if you were the lead car, by the time we got an hour out, we were the only car <laughs> going north because it was a winter weather advisory. They had told people not to travel. We have a big truck. We have four wheel drive. We stopped and got a t full tank of gas. So it was heavy. I never felt like we were going to go in the ditch. I just felt like we were going to have to go slow, right? And just really watch and make sure we weren't kind of... But then someone come up behind you and they'd want to and you know go by you and then they'd try to push uh, in the lane that no one had driven in and then they'd start to oh it was just sketchy it was really sketchy but we made it home i don't know we got home about 10 o'clock maybe yeah about 10 o'clock we got in to the house about 10 30 11 and then we had to unpack and we hadn't eaten because we didn't stop so we so ross had cereal and i had a peanut butter sandwich <laughs> It was fine. We could have just gone to bed. But then I stayed up because I have test knitters who are test knitting for me in multiple projects. And I had not been able to respond to them all weekend. Um, because Saturday afternoon, I took my mom. Well, we went out to breakfast. Uh, the, the My family has this brunch spot that's local to them. It's called the Frying Pan right off 229 in Sioux Falls and my aunt and my uncles will show up there um, my mom's friends and mom and dad's friends will show up there so Saturday morning is kind of breakfast out and when the kids are there you bring the kids because then all their friends want to see the kids so we were home so we went out to you know brunch and then that takes it just takes a while to go out to brunch and chat and then mom wanted me to take her to the mall because she wanted to Reach, make a return at Dillard's and they have a brand new Dillard's in South Dakota and it is beautiful. So I took her and we got her walker in the car and we got out there and um, we made her return. And then um, by the time we got back to the house, I needed to knit on the shawl pattern and answer questions. And then we went out to dinner. We went to the play <laughs> and Sunday morning. We got up and went to Palm Sunday service with my mom and dad at church. And then, um, then we went out to brunch across town where my two nephews work. So I have two, well, all their whole family has worked at the original um, pancake house, <laughs> um, but it's on the other side of town. So we went out to brunch and saw both of them and they came over and one of them was our waiter then. And, and so, I mean, it was just a busy weekend. I didn't, there wasn't a lot of time. Then I taught um, and then Ross picked me up. And as soon as I hit the door at quarter to five, we were on our way home to try to beat some of the weather. It wasn't as bad in South Dakota and they weren't going to get as much snow, but we knew we were heading into it. So anyway, it was, that's just a little bit of what's happening to my weekend. Okay. I do have a couple of new patterns to show you and they are not out yet, but they are coming shortly. And, um, I have another shawl coming 
out pattern <laughs> coming out on the next podcast. So I'm going to show you these two because they'll come out in the next couple of weeks. If you are not already on my newsletter list, get on my newsletter list, go over to irockknits.com and sign up, subscribe to the newsletter. You put in your first name and you put in um, your email and then you subscribe and you'll get a free pattern for doing that. And if you've unsubscribed and you want to go back and resubscribe, please do that. But I send out a newsletter every time I have a new pattern and I give you a discount code. And that's just my way of saying thank you to all of you who watch. But I have the Pinky Swear hat coming out. And this is using that Miss Babs yarn. And it's got that um, interesting rolled bottom that's really fun to do if you've never done it before. And then it's just got um, some decreases. But those little stitches are supposed to look like little pinkies locked together. And that... Um, all the proceeds from that pattern, which were the mitts, goes to the Pinky Swear Foundation here in Edina, Minnesota, who helps families whose children have cancer with financial um, monies. They just give them money to help them get by when kids are going through a cancer treatment. Or This is journey. the hat that Chevy ate. And he ate a, a chunk right there. And so I went in and fixed it and then I tied a little bow right there so that when we took pictures I would remember to have that be in the back. I think I did a pretty good job of fixing it but he literally chewed a bite out of it right there and so I had to go in and make ribbing and then because I was working this way instead of up I couldn't do that little rolled brim that's really fun to to work that little um, rolled edge, but I think it worked out okay. I mean, I was about ready to kill him when it happened because I was so mad because I was sitting right there. I might have already told you guys that. I was sitting at the desk and he was being really quiet. I should have known. And then all of a sudden I saw that he had eaten. And that's the first and last time he's ever taken any of the yarn or the knitting. So, you know, um, and then I also did the Pinky Swear socks. So um, here they are. That was a little, little pinkies. And then it's a three by three rib at the top. It's kind of a Dutch heel. It's a square heel. Um, and then I did a anatomically correct toe. So you do, do decreases um, on one side and then you add to the other side so that it's shaped like a toe, now that I've had it on the sock blocker, I'm not sure it will, yeah, there you go. See, it's shaped, there you go. So we have a short part and a long part so that it, it is shaped kind of more like your toe. You can use any toe or heel that you want, um, but I like that toe um, for my socks. And so both of those patterns and the set will be coming out discounted probably in about a week to 10 days. Um, I have test knitters finishing up the socks. The hat is already done and ready. So once my testers finish up the socks, then the pattern can go live. The pattern has, I've already taken pictures and the pattern has been laid out by my tech editor. So we're just waiting on any changes. And they found a couple of little errors in the sock pattern, things that needed to be changed. Um, um, and cl for clarity, too. So we've gotten those done already. I have several people who've already finished the first sock. So just need, you know, to get everybody finished up. But that'll be the Pinky Swear socks and hat. But you'll also be able to get the whole set if you didn't before at a discounted price. And then all that money will go to the Pinky Swear Foundation. So I'd really appreciate it if people would go out and buy that one. Um, or even buy it for full price if you can afford to. That would be great. Then I can make a bigger donation. Audiobooks. I read, oh, it cut off. What? Uh, the first book I read was Not the Usual Suspects, and that is number five in the cities by Molly McRae. That is the small uh, town yarn store <laughs> that has the knitters who solve crimes. It's kind of cute. Um, I didn't like this as well as I liked the others. And I think that can sometimes happen with the series is that it has the same premise and a lot of the same characters. And so it can get a little just um, not as exciting to read. 
But I, you know, I finished it. It was good. It was a nine hour audiobook. And then I read um, Long Bright River, and that's by Liz Moore. And I, this was the best one that I read in the last two weeks. I did like it quite a bit. Um, it was named the best book of the year. And this is a police procedural and a thriller um, in which a uh, city of Philadelphia, Philadelphia is a character. So it's a lot about Philadelphia. So if you're from that area or have been there, that might be, you know, a lot of fun. Two sisters travel the same streets, though their lives couldn't be more different than one of them goes missing. In a Philadelphia neighborhood rocked by opioid crisis, two once inseparable sisters find themselves at odds. One, Casey, lives on the streets in the vice of addiction. The other, Mickey, walks those same blocks on her police beat. They don't speak anymore, but Mickey never stops worrying about her sibling. Then Casey disappears. So it is a missing person situation. I found it quite good. It, you know, it was fast paced. It was quick. It's not always what I like to read, um, but I liked it quite a bit. I liked the characters. I liked the relationship between the sisters and how that was a struggle. Um, so yeah, I, I would recommend that one. Okay, this next one I wrote, read is called The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. I kind of forgot. Um, this is a story of a woman who um, finds her solace in books and um, she falls in love with a student in her class who is seven years old and she is a teacher's aide and um, he is in the foster system and she wants to adopt him so badly and become his mom and they talk about it all the time and he gets shoved around and he has been through a lot both of his parents have died and he was the one who discovered them and um yeah it's that part is sad but their relationship is so um nice and she's so nurturing to him but she has no money um she grew up in the foster system and so they wish they wish all the time that things could change and they read these books by a man named jack masterson and he writes about um and the island where everything, all your wishes can come true. And they read these books together and there's a whole series of them. And then Jack stops writing the books, but there's a twist and there's a contest and things happen. Yeah, it, it was um, intriguing because you weren't sure it was suspenseful. Um, but then it was this lovely story. Then I read The Last Romantics, and that is by Tara Conklin, and she's pretty popular. I've read something by her before, and I don't know why, but the title kind of had turned me off. I just wasn't sure I wanted to read it. I didn't know what it was about, but I did like it. It's called, In the spring of 1981, the young Skinner siblings lose their father to a heart attack and their mother to paralyzing depression. Events that thrust them into a period they will later call the pause. Caught between the predictable life they once led and an uncertain future that stretches before them, the siblings navigate the dangers and resentments of the pause. A couple of the books that I read this time were both about bad mothers, like mothers who just can't do the job, can't get the job done. And sometimes that's hard to read as a mother. And so in, in this one was kind of depressing because she goes into a, a real depression after her husband dies and she has these children and she kind of neglects them. She does neglect them for a long time because she doesn't like come out of her bedroom and nobody comes to help. And I, you know, you're kind of like, come on, why is no one stepping up to kind of help this family? Um, so that part is sad, but it's the how the children grow up and how they try to get their act together and their lives together with that piece of their lives that was very traumatic and not nurturing. So it did end up, it, it did end up being quite, quite good. Well, very well written, very well written. Okay, and then the last one I read is called The City of Thieves by David Benioff and I put it down 16 times. This one is so depressing and so sad and so graphic. And I kept saying, stop reading, Corey, stop reading. But I, I just kept thinking so many people gave this five stars. It is well-written, but it is about um, 
Russia during World War II. When a dead German paratrooper lands in his street, Lev is caught looting the body and dragged to jail, fearing for his life. He shares his cell with the charismatic and grandiose, grandiose Koila, a hus handsome young soldier assert, arrested on desertion charges. Um, they get given a chance to go and find for the colonel a dozen eggs somewhere in the city. Um, and they, instead of being killed and they go on this hunt and there are no eggs there's no food the people are starving that you know um the german forces are coming and they're fighting and it, they're yeah they're struggling and so this young boy is with this older old middle-aged guy or older guy than he and he's vulgar and crude and but you kind of like him. I, I just don't know if you love learning about, you know, a wartime in a country that I hadn't read about. Like I had um, not that long ago, on, go read the book about um, the German occupation of Paris, right? Which we don't hear about as much. Um, and then this was more like the fighting during the war of, in Russia, which, so I learned a lot, but it, it's, you know, it's graphic and bold and, hard <laughs> so I don't I didn't give it very many stars but people a lot of people on Goodreads gave it five stars so I don't know <laughs> it was just okay I have a little bit of announcement to make I am going to be joining the ranks of Patreon I have been thinking about this for months maybe even a year because I really don't want to monetize my channel, um, but it is becoming harder and harder for me to um, keep my small business solvent. I live in a lovely home. I have lovely things. I have everything that I could hope for, but it is hard to be the person that has a small business that doesn't earn any money. <laughs> and to have the husband say, you know, it's okay, you know, it's fine when he's working so hard to make money and I'm working so hard, but not breaking even. And so my pattern sales are down. Everyone's pattern sales, except the top designers are down. Um, I'm not able to cover my costs. Um, I'm not covering my costs on shipping things out on the podcast. Um, and so I just decided I'm just going to go for it. If it doesn't work well or I hate it, then I will just walk away. But um, the, po the podcast will stay free on YouTube. And I will continue to use my chatting with the friends segments for free. And that will be out there because I don't want to, to make money on my friends who are willing to come on the podcast. But then this section, the section I do where I do Corey's stories and I talk about my designs and I do audiobooks, and I talk about what I'm reading, watching, um, I share what I'm knitting on, um, then that will be over on Patreon. And I will keep the dollar amount really cheap between one and five dollars um, just to try to generate a little bit of income. I mean, I've been doing these free podcasts for five years it takes me two days every two weeks to record, edit, navigate, um, get it uploaded, uh, c contact, organize, make my notes. Um, and so in order for me to keep going, I'm going, in, and in my business as well, I'm going to step back a little from designing, not design as much, teach more. We had this long conversation about this because that is where... The money is and right now i'm able to get people to hire me to teach i'm just going to try this so i hope that none of you are offended by the fact that i'm going to monetize um, my time my energy my enthusiasm about the knitting um and and you do not have to go over you will still be able to get like a 35 to 45 minute hopefully podcast with friends for the next at least six months um, and then I will see where it goes from there um, but I don't want to stop podcasting 
but it does take time and my designs just aren't, <laughs> they're just not hitting home runs. Um, you know, I sell some patterns, but I'm, I'm not covering my costs at the end of the year and we just hit our end of the year taxes and I just, you know, it, when you're put, I work full time at this job, but if I was doing another job, I'd be making a salary and I'm not. And then that's hard to then say, Ross, I need another $500 in my business account to get by it. I, you know, I pay a tech editor, I pay my photographer, I have tons of monthly bills. It's incredible how much it costs to have a newsletter, have a website, have um, story, I have to pay for storage. Um, it's just, I have a whole list. Every month I pay about $300 in just bills for this business that are just monthly recurring. And I don't cover the cost in a year. And it's so sad because I don't want to give it up. So this is my kind of last hope um, for the husband to be able to say, yes, I work really hard at this. I stay up until all hours of the night. I pull my hair out sometimes because things aren't working and I get stressed. And then he says to me, it's just not worth it. Like, it's just not worth it to you. You're, you know, you're stressed out about it all the time. And, and I, yeah, I am, I am stressed out about it. I want it to make, I want to make a better go of it. And so I'm going to try to change things a little bit and just to see how it goes. So uh, the next podcast will go up. Um, I'll be with my friend Ginny. Uh, we're recording on Saturday. And then the other half of the podcast will be out on Patreon. So I'm giving everybody kind of two weeks notice. And then I'll announce it each week um, on the podcast uh, that I will also have content on Patreon. Then I'm thinking about maybe doing a book group on Patreon with this group where we could read the same book. Um, audio or hardcover. Um, I will give away the prizes on Patreon. Um, I'm also thinking about doing some knit nights together, um, knitting group time together where we share. I would like to get to know some of you better and have and talk to you and find out what you're knitting and what you're reading. So I'm thinking about setting that up um, through that Patreon. Um, let me know if you have supported other people via Patreon, if that is something that you like, that works for you. If, um, if you don't like it, don't tell me, <laughs> okay, because this has been really hard decision for me after giving away content for five years. And I do think that podcast, podcasts go by the wayside, right? If I had more subscribers and I had more views, I could make some more money on YouTube, but I'm not there yet either. And so I just don't know how else to kind of bolster my account a little bit. And I know some of you are very generous and that you would come over and, you know, pay a couple dollars a month to watch my podcast. It, it just feels kind of icky and I don't know why. So, okay, I'm going to stop talking about it because then I just get worried and stressed about what you're all going to think of me. Um, this week's giveaway was a uh, bunch of skeins of brown yarn and a small notions bag. And I, I sealed the thing so I can't show you, but I drew and it was, the comment was the word friend and um, it goes to Edina Cole. So Edina, get, I have your address, I think. I'm pretty sure I do. So I'll just mail this out to you. And um, congratulations, you used the word um, friend and you said that I'm your friend and I am your friend. So you have uh, some brown yarn, some bobbins and a pouch in here. And then this week's giveaway is glorious. Look at that. Seven skeins of Barocco Maya yarn, 137 yards to 50 grams. Uh, 20 stitches to 4 inches on a US 8, and it is cotton and alpaca. It's a blend, and you're going to get seven skeins of it, along with a pattern book to make something. And so, 7 times 1, 37 equals 959 yards. So there are a bunch of patterns in this book. There's, um, I looked at all of them. There's a vest and... Um, it's called Kid Classic, and this 
the person who donated this gave had picked something in the book to make with this yarn and then they weren't going to make it so it's kind of a seafoam green that's the color i'm calling it it it's may, maybe leans a little blue but yeah it's really pretty seven skeins it's very soft and it's a chainette construction yarn so it's it's plump so yeah if you want to win <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. If you would like to win um, that prize for next time, please comment down below um, and use the word Maya, M-A-Y-A. That's the yarn. And so you can just stick it in your comment or just put it, it, put it down there. And then that's the keyword that I'll draw for when I use my random generator. I put in a keyword and then anybody who comments is eligible to, to win. I am going to Yarn Fest in just two weeks, so I'm hoping that I will see somebody there. So let me know if you're going um, to Yarn Fest. And then I have a couple of things that I found on the internet that I want to share. This popped up in my Instagram feed, and it's called the Bunny Tail Beanie. And it is so cute for Easter. I just had to show you all. Is that not darling? It's by Katerina Filipova Blanchard. And it's just a cable stitch on the back of a reverse stockinette hat. So cute. So then I clicked on her stuff because I thought, I don't know her. And I saw this. I thought it was so cute. It's just a little cowl. Oh, so cute. It's called Felix Fox and that's also by Katerina. Yeah. So darling, people are so creative. I love stuff like that. Then I ordered thimbleannafabrics.com. Thimble I'll just hold this up. Here's the, here's the little tag. Thimbleanna. And I got little tags <laughs> that I'm going to sew into some of my sweaters. And it says, they say, this is the back. I just think they're so cute. So I got six in a pack. I bought two packs. And so I'm going to give one of those away um, on the next podcast. I will lay, leave this on the table and I'll give one of these packs away because I just thought that was, <laughs> they were so cute. I'm going to sew a couple labels into the back of a couple of sweaters where I, I always have to look and say, is this the front or the back? Then I ordered some little big yarn balls. It's a giant stitch marker. <laughs> I didn't think, I don't think I knew that they were quite this big, but they put your logo or your name on the label. Are those not cute? And I don't remember where I got those. So I'm gonna have to look that up. I got two packs and you get five, one, two, three, five stitch markers. So purple, orange, green, pink, and blue. And they say I rock knits on them. And I think what you could do is like hook them on your purse kind of as a charm. I think that would be kind of cute. Or your keychain. I don't know how long this paper would, would wear like rubbing up against stuff if you throw your keys in the bottom of your purse. But I thought they were really cute. I'll put the where I got them down below. So on the screen. I just thought, oh, those are so cute. Okay, then the last little thing that I got is um, an expandable sewing gauge. Have you guys ever seen one of these? This helps you to put your pins in certain distance apart. Well, Corey, we don't use pins that much. You know what you use this for? This is where you put your buttons on your button band. So you decide how far apart your buttons need to be, and then you, you put your stitch markers, you lay it on there, and then you decide and you put your stitch markers so you know where the buttonhole should be. Did you know that, this, that there was this tailor tool? I had no idea. It's brilliant. Not that you cannot lay a tape measure on there, but then you got to decide, okay, I'm going to do each one two and a quarter, and then you get to the bottom and it's not quite right, right? I, I don't know. I've just had trouble placing buttons certain distance apart. 
So this is called Simflex Expandable Sewing Gauge, and I got it on Amazon. I saw someone using it on Instagram, and I didn't know what to call it. So I went out and tried to find it, and this is the one I found. And it wasn't very expensive, but you can use it for smocking, buttons, drapery pleats, eyes, dress pleats, and much more. And then it's got instructions on the back side for how to, how to use it. And for quilting, you can decide how far apart thing, how far apart you want to maybe make strips or whatever. <laughs> I was just super impressed. Yeah, it's got there there are measure there are measures on here. Yeah, it's it's and it takes nothing to store. So there, you are enabled. I I'm not sponsored. <laughs> I just thought it was a cool tool and I like to show you guys things that I find. A um, couple more little Corey stories. I went to Northfield Yarn and taught a class a week ago on Sunday and afternoon and that was a beading class. It was the first time I'd taught beading and it was using my Christina hat pattern. And um, so I had over prepared. I had more information than I needed, <laughs> but it was really fun. And while I was there, I took a little video of the yarn store. So I'm going to put that in at the end, but they had an entire wall of Emma's yarn. It was really cool to see. Uh, Emma's yarn is out of Florida. I talk about that a little bit on the podcast, um, but yeah, they had a whole wall of her yarn and it said Emma's yarn about it. It was really fun to see. Um, and lots of different yarns. You know, I love love going into different yarn stores. I do kind of have a rule that I can't buy when I'm teaching, because otherwise I don't come home with a paycheck. But um, yeah, it was it was really fun to teach down there. I want to say hi to those two ladies uh, that came to that class. It we only had two. It was a couple. They had had um, a couple other people that showed interest and then didn't come or something. I don't know. It was a bummer. Um, but we had a great time, the three of us together, beading and putting beads on, and they got all kinds of <laughs> tips and attention from me, so that was really fun. Okay, that's all I have for today. Come in for your hug. Uh, love you all. I will edit the information at the end of the podcast. I have to run to a doctor's appointment um, here, and then I have to go pick up Chevy from... Uh, daycare. He has not been home today, so I got to run and get him. So I'm kind of on a schedule, but um, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks. Bye.